Bitcoin bulls are starting to run out of time and it's not over yet, right? The sell-off is not necessarily done, but we are coming into a very key level of support. So on today's show, we're going to identify where the bounce levels are and what happens next if those zones get lost. Not only that, but we'll have a look at the altcoin market sector because there could be some important rotational shifts which are about to take place. So without further ado, smash the like button, hit the bell notification and subscribe to the channel. And then let's have a look at the banter bubble over here which you can see on the hourly everything is starting to turn green very very choppy coming into super key support daily still most of the coins over here are red and the weekly most of the gains have been completely given up monthly is holding up believe it or not meme coins still holding up 478 percent 461 and 430 uh, for some of those meme coins on the monthly gains which is pretty substantial right that's almost bigger gains than what bitcoin has done it is not almost it is bigger bitcoin bigger gains than Bitcoin had you have bought the exact lows of the cycle. So let's get into it. Why is the pullback still in motion? What exactly is going on? How is the market perceiving what's happening right now? And if we look over here at this chart, you can see from SINs, uh, Bitcoin ETF update Tuesday, March the 19th. Of course, we had another negative flow, net outflow of miners 326, right? $326 million out of the market. Just to give you a little bit of a, a different perspective, focus on the histogram below. This is kind of what the flows have looked like over the course of uh, the ETF since inception, which was um, uh, in 2024, beginning of this year, the 12th of January. You can see it's been positive, positive, slightly negative, slightly negative, positive, 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 positive and then now slightly negative once again. And that's part of the reason, right? creating a little bit of a dip is it cause to panic well not necessarily yet uh, as mentioned yesterday if anything this creates a buying opportunity i will show you where to start to panic not yet despite the thumbnail despite what you saw on the youtube thumbnail uh just please forgive our designers you know they're playing into the youtube algorithm uh, i will show you when to panic and i'll show you also where the best place is to buy the dip. If you look at TED Talks macro over here, he says the market has fully priced in another hold from the Fed at today's meeting and is pricing in three rate cuts from them by the end of the year. So they keep pushing forward that rate cut when they anticipate that the Federal Reserve is going to cut those interest rates. For now, they remain unchanged at 525 to 550 basis points, which was the same as what it was last time. We'll also get an update on what's called the dot plot, which is where each of the different uh, Fed members are able to vote on where they think the, uh, the interest rates will be in the future. So that usually gives quite a good bit of guidance on what to expect next for the market. As for the stock market, though, it's still looking very, very strong, but it is fast approaching our target levels. So I have now changed the scale from weekly to monthly just because price is moving so quick and it'll give you a much better indication of what comes next. S&P 500 on the top left, you can see our target zones in terms of a percentage. We're looking at about another 5% move towards the upside over there. If you look at the one on the right-hand side over here, uh, uh, which is going to be QQQ, so the NASDAQ, uh, the tech sector, 15% further upside before hitting our target. That one moves a little bit quicker, right? Because it is the tech sector, which trades uh, uh, similar to crypto. And then we have the Dow Jones at 7.45% further upside as per our targets. What about Coinbase? Coinbase over here on the bottom left of the screen. Well, that's still looking fine. Despite the pullback, it's perfectly normal. We've had a pretty substantial move. We met the measured move of the target that we had previously laid out. That was 129% for Coinbase. And, and now it's start to focus on the next major key levels and next major targets, which is going to be pretty much taking price all the way up to 354% for Coinbase, uh, which from current levels is another 52%. Now, bear in mind, if Coinbase moves 52%, the altcoin sector will probably at least do 52% towards the upside. So it's probably not the best time to get overly bearish. Why has the market got bearish? I think Alex Kruger laid out pretty well over here. A couple of reasons. Uh, in order of importance, he says over here, for anyone out there who may need to know why, if you have a burning desire to understand, well, why, 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 why is the market putting back? Too much leverage. The funding rates matter. I'll bring that up in a bit. Ethan driving the market south. The market has now just suddenly decided that the Ethereum uh, ETF is probably not going to be passed. For some reason, they've decided that. They've said that's what's happening next. And consequently, 
ETH BTC has been going down. We'll look at that chart as well. We have negative BTC ETF inflows, which I just showed you, but overall it's net positive, right? It's a couple of down days, mostly still positive. And then of course the Solana meme coin mania, maybe it went a little bit too far. Let me know in the comments, maybe it went a little bit too far. Also, while you add it, while you smash the like button, hit the bell notification and subscribe if you're not already, please vote as well below. Are you buying the dip? Yes or no? I want to know. Are you buying the dip? Yes or no? Is it too soon to be buying or are you slowly scaling in? Uh, vote in the comment section below. There's some major things that have also happened with BlackRock, which we'll bring up in just a moment. So stay tuned for that. You cannot believe what BlackRock have recently just done. Okay, looking at that funding, as uh, Alex Kruger sa said over there, it is important to look at. The open interest over the last 30 days, this is the various different changes. As price, consider as price has grinded up, from those ultimate lows over here, higher and higher. Every time there is a little bit of a flush, the open interest pulled back 32%. Then it pulled back 75%, 47%. And this most recent flush on the open interest dropped at 53%. What is open interest? It's the interest in the market, right? The amount of open positions, new positions that are opening, especially on leverage. And usually you don't want that to go to uh, high. If it goes too, too positive, then that is indicative of a very, very frothy market. Look at the all-time highs that were previously printed how high that open interest got. We haven't yet reached even close to those levels. And as the market expands and becomes bigger and bigger, you actually expect that the open interest will go even higher than the peaks that we had previously. So it doesn't mean that the ultimate top is in for the market and it was a left translated cycle and it's all over. No. Probably not. Very, very unlikely. Unlikely. You can also count the number of pullbacks that you've had within the cycle. So very, very quickly, just looking at these over here, uh, we had, ultimately, we had one, two, three, four, and let's consider this the fifth one. You usually get seven. Seven pullbacks within an overall bull run. Yes, we are starting to really reach over here. Coming into the fifth one means that you are technically late to the Bitcoin party. The altcoin party is still debatable. There's still opportunity over there. So we'll cover four potential coins that you could be looking at as well as the levels where you could gain an entry. So stay tuned until the end. Looking at the funding rate over here on the weekly time frame as well, you can see it has come down pretty significantly as per the bars on the bottom right-hand side over there with price coming down. It could even go red. If it does go red, it's a screaming buy opportunity anytime that you get red in a bull market in terms of the funding rate going down, screaming, screaming buy, went red over there. Look at that. Price immediately reacts. Red over there. Price reacts. Red over there leads into the massive, massive upswing that we recently had. So if this funding on the weekly time frame goes negative, bet your best dollar that I'll be letting you guys know that it's time to buy uh, within this type of market. So here it is, uh, looking at the ETF and potential rotational play, altcoinness.com says it well over here, rotation plus the altcoin season signal. We'll look at is it altcoin season as well in a moment. He says over here, ETH spot ETFs delayed. BlackRock launches digital asset fund and deposits 100 million USDC on the ETH network. Few understand what is coming next, right? So ultimately, you can see the SEC's final deadline is coming in on the 23rd of May, which is pretty soon, right? We're not that far off. Just a couple of months away. That is for the Van Eck one. Uh, let's see, do we have the BlackRock one on yet? No, we don't have the BlackRock one on yet. But with that being said, BlackRock did do something major, which you just mentioned in that tweet. BlackRock launched a digital asset fund and they deposited 100 million USDC on the ETH network. So they're obviously still backing the most secure chain, that being ETH. Um, and there it is. You can see over there, they created ultimately 100 different shares as per Marty Party. BlackRock has tokenized their BlackRock USD institutional digital liquidity fund into 100 different shares written on the bottom right over there on an ERC uh, 20 contracts. So this could be the very etchings of what could start to create that hype back into ETH. And we know that the, for the altcoin season uh, flow to take place, you need Ethereum to outperform Bitcoin, which it hasn't been doing. It's just been bobbing and weaving up and down uh, for the last five months against Bitcoin. Uh, not, not technically underperforming it, not outperforming it, just literally bobbing and weaving between a clear range level, which we've brought up many, many times. But because BlackRock did this, the token is called Biddle. B-U-I-D-L. 
That is their fund that they basically launched over here. Of course, that means that it's all transparent. It's all on the blockchain. You can literally go and look at the uh, contract address, which I'm about to show you now. And many people think that they're buying meme coins. You can see look, he has the list. He has the list of, of coins within the contract address. So unbelievable. People have sent a lot of money. It's $100 million, this fund right over here. And uh, ultimately, why are there a bunch of different other coins over here? It's because the DGENs got hold of their wallet address and started to drop them different coins, right? Look at them. They got MOG. Uh, they got Sheena, not Shiba Inu, but Sheena Inu. I guess that's the, the female version. Voldemort, Pepe, Etherpet, uh, Aviator, SPX6900. Uh, you got all sorts of stuff. Harry Potter, Queen, Pepe Fork, Monk. Uh, the list goes on and on. Feel free, go and have a look over here. There's the contract address. I mean, you, you'll find it on Twitter very, very quickly. But this is the state of the market, right? This is the state of the market. What does this mean for Bitcoin? What does it mean for Bitcoin price action? Most paths result in bullish continuation. I'll give you the bearish scenarios and what it would look like for full failure of this, uh, if it is a left translated cycle, what full failure of that cycle looks like. But this is the most likely outcome. We know that we've been range brown with this being the range high. We know that this has been the macro range low and this has been the mid range, right? Now, zooming in, these are the two most likely outcomes. Uh, outcome number one, which I think is the more probable one, is probably uh, range bound. Range bound between $59,000 and up to the top side here at $69,000, meaning you're going to have about a $10,000 range where Bitcoin will just chop uh, between those two levels leading into the halving cycle. That would be incredibly bullish. And then once it breaks back above and reclaims $69,000 holding that level, uh, then ultimately you'll probably have expansion onwards and upwards. The other, the other situation is maybe it does go a little bit deeper. Maybe you do actually get down to $52,000 Bitcoin, which would be a screaming buy coming into to that level, matching up with the 21 exponential moving average, the yellow line on a weekly time frame, and then reclaim back into the $59,000 level, and then pretty much lead into expansion, uh, which is similar to trajectory one, right? So trajectory one is going to be this one over here. Trajectory two is going to be this line over here. And the third option, which would be a full on breakdown, would then have to look something like this, right? Which would, anyway, if you did have any, a, a, a sell off all the way down to, uh, let's say, $50,000, it would still lead to a bounce anyway. I would even argue it would lead to a clearance of these recent highs over here to capture the liquidity from this week that was set in play last week, meaning that most likely even the most bearish outcome probably leads Bitcoin straight back to about that $69,000 level where you would then expect to see a rejection and then it's all over, right? Then you go create a new swing low, so lower high, lower low, and so the high time frame trends uh, would start to shift towards the downside. Right now, that's not happening. Right now, the most probable outcome, I would say, is uh, outcome one, which is ranging between 59 and 69. The next probable outcome would be a sweep below 59,000, really scaring the market out. Price gets bought up, closes above here as a wick, back above $59,000. And then you have onwards and upwards. And then the lowest probability outcome, which I would, I would give probably about a 5 to 10% chance of happening, is a sweep all the way down under $50,000 big bounce up and then it rolls over and it's it's all over very very unlikely in my opinion all you need to do is understand the trend that's all you need to do and to make it very very simple you can put on the super guppy trend indicator over here which is all different emas you got the three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen and multiples of three all the way up to the 200 different ema on this level over here and you can see when it's green you're in the market and when it goes gray is when you can start to close your positions and say that maybe the trend is starting to come to an end uh, red is where you start to exit fully and you'd even consider the short the market. See over here, it went fully green on this candle at $28,000. It went even before that. If we go all the way back, you can see over here on the daily time frame how this indicator would have kept you in play, right? 
Let's go back actually from the top over here to show you the accuracy of this indicator. The indicator starts to turn gray over here at $58,000. Rem remember the top of the last cycle was $69,000. So that says start to close your positions over here. It turns red on that bounce into $52,000. You would have started to short the market and you can pretty much hold your short until it turns green again. Okay, once it turns green over here at $20,800, you're pretty much long and strong. Gray, you start to take some profit in case the trend fails, turns green again, you're in, you're out over here, you're back in over here at $28,000, you're back out over here, you get in again at $45,000 or $42,000, excuse me, and it's been holding ever since. So that is a trend in motion. You need to at least pay attention to the daily trend. Okay, the four-hour trend has already shifted towards the downside. So if your fingers are itching and you want to buy crypto right now, at the very least, wait for a break of structure on the four-hour trend, which would result in a higher high and a higher low. So if the four-hour time frame is looking like this right now, you want to wait for price to break above, create a higher high, then create the next higher low. You can start to buy that higher low, and then it should be onwards and upwards once again, and back in alignment with the daily trend. So we'll bring that up in a moment, show you what that looks like on the four-hour time frame. But here's been our level, right? That was the buy zone. Could it be that the dip's over and that's it? Of course, very, very possible. A lot of people are looking for much, much lower prices, and every single dip that's occurred within the cycle seems to have been completely front run. Now, one of my friends brought up a very good point to me, and it's something I never considered. In the previous cycles, we had the manipulation of exchanges like FTX and uh, Binance, which would ultimately trade against their customers. In this part of the cycle, those guys have com been completely wiped out and eradicated off of the scene, and consequently, they under the scrutiny and and watching eye of regulators and less likely to do these types of things. So maybe that's the reason that price is trading much more technically and holding the key levels of support, bouncing off of significant levels, whereas in the prior cycles, if you had marked out your buy zone over here, this is usually what would happen. Straight, straight through your buy zone, goes much deeper than expected, front runs the next major level of support, dips straight through the most obvious level of support, uh, and kind of finds a zone somewhere in the middle over here, basically wrecking everybody. Everybody that bought the first level of support gets wrecked. The people that were waiting for the strongest levels of support gets front run and price rallies away from that. Now, this cycle, that hasn't been happening. This cycle has been pretty technically sound. And if anything, uh, people are putting their orders before the obvious zones, so could it be that maybe that is starting to break towards the upside? It is a real possibility. For now in the daily time frame, though, we still remain below the key pivot level. The pivot level over here um, is near the highs at 71,826. We also below the purple uh, horizontal over here, which is your 200 exponential moving average on the one hour. And we've recently, right now, as it stands, current price action is bouncing off of the 200 exponential moving average on the four hour time frame situated at at 62,144. So where does this whole picture start to change? Well, it is time to pay attention. It's time to keep hyper, hyper focused over here. I'm going to turn off um, just a couple of these different indicators to clean everything up, to make it nice and easy for you to understand. And let's turn off the drawings. Should we turn off the drawings? I might need the drawings. Wait, okay, let's turn off the drawings just for a moment. So focus just on these two different EMAs. The EMAs that I have in play are the nine and the 18 exponential moving average, and it's on the daily time frame. When price is above and they cross with yellow above pink, it's bullish, and you hold the trend onwards and upwards. When you start to lose those levels and the yellow crosses below the pink, that's where the trend really is threatened and could potentially be going in for a much deeper sell-off, right? Where could those sell-off levels be? Well, one of your worst case scenarios is going to be on this zone over here at $52,000. So if you look left and you focus on this consolidation that led to the big expansion, $52,000 would be the obvious level of support. Now, this is where you need to watch carefully. Hopefully, okay, the drawings are going to come back on. So just bear with me for a moment. If price rallies up into this level and starts to show signs of weakness rejecting, and then you start to get these EMAs crossing over, 
and you form a little bit of a range over there, that may be the very uh, first signs that, okay, we really do have to exit. And then you're going to fall into that 10% probability, which I said was less likely, but still possible. Hence, I gave it a 10% chance of happening. And that means that now you need to start to really consider to exit your positions because you are going through a full-on distribution. And that distribution's first level of major support is going to be down here, uh, which also happens to line up with your 618 and 0 0.6. 65 fib retracement levels, which is your golden pocket between $50,800 and $52,000. And then we reevaluate. If price can't bounce out of that level and show new signs of reaccumulation there, uh, then of course the 10% probability might be playing out and we're going a whole lot lower. But all you need to do if you're holding dry powder, if you're holding a cash position right now, is simply gauge the trend on the four hour or the hourly time frame. It's literally lower lows and lower highs, and that's it. Until such time as you break that trend, uh, this level will change each and every passing day as price action unfolds itself to us. Right now, that significant level that must be reclaimed is right over here. That is your last lower high on the four-hour time frame, meaning we need to see price get back above $68,500. So if you can break this downsloping trend line over here on the four-hour break above, get above this zone and hold that level, then we know that, okay, cool, this was the dip, that was the shakeout, it's confirmed, it's onwards and upwards, and everything bullish is back on the table. But if price rallies up into this zone and rejects over here, well, the trend is your friend, right? Then expect that we're going to come into the next buy zone. And I think the next buy zone, as I outlined, between that 52 and 55K level uh, could be the zone that leads to the next bounce, which at that point will have a different lower high, so it would look something like this. Okay, now we just need to break above this level, which is going to then be at 65k as opposed to waiting for 69k so you see how the levels change as price action does unfold we're getting a little bit of a technical bounce right now because of that 200 ema but if it rejects from here at about 65 66 thousand dollars today then i expect lower prices to come into uh, into the market okay uh, Run says it really nicely over here, looking at the altcoin sector. He says, altcoin bull markets usually experience seven plus major corrections of about 20% or more. Price cycles was much more, even 40%. Each correction usually ends a frothy narrative, uh, which has been occurring in the cycle, and then it ig ignites capital rotation into a new and different narrative. If this dip becomes a major correction, he says, so 20% uh, or more, and it doesn't recover quickly, then it could flush some of the old narratives out. So keyword, if it doesn't recover quickly, if it recovers quick, meme coins are going to bounce again. We're talking specifically about meme coins as the last narrative. If it takes long to occur, it's probably going to flush the meme coins out, okay? And then uh, you can say, for example, soul memes uh, would have a capital rotation into a new set of narratives. And some of the narratives are Sui, Aptos, Phantom, and Ton. We saw relative strength on all of these coins yesterday with the first signs of a little bit of a bounce. And that's what you want to use as your clue, right? Every time you see small uh, little chances of a bounce, you can go on to here. You can even change the filter, I think, to uh, a five-minute time frame. Focus on the five-minute time frame. There we have it. And you can see which coins are bouncing the quickest on the banter bubbles, right? Which are the coins that are moving first when the market starts to recover? So what you want to do is you want to have it on the five-minute time frame when the market is red, when everything is red on the five minutes. And then as, they, as you start to notice a shift whilst looking for the next higher low, look at the bubbles that are turning up first. And you can obviously go through the list. That's the top 100, go to 101 to 200, go to 300 to 400. Look for those first moving coins. And those are the ones you want to focus on. So yesterday was these coins, Sui. Okay, here's the chart for Sui, breaking out of a high time frame range, defending that $1.40 level, holding it as support. It's looking good, looking good. Continue to hold that position over there. Aptos is already looking strong. It reclaimed the $10 level. And as a range, it means you're going to target all the way up to $20 as your next zone. So it's already at 15. I wouldn't necessarily long over here. Um, you're probably better off looking at something like Sui as opposed to uh, Aptos, which is already in the middle of its trending move. Another one is Phantom, which I I did give in the whale room community yesterday these were the two trade setups i said that well this would be the more more optimal optimal one the one on the right hand side which would be having your stop loss down to 77.43 so zero point 
seven seven four three would be the stop out area phantom was showing huge signs of strength and looking for big movements over there ton coin which is the telegram coin you can see uh, in a parallel channel rising towards the top side it is meeting a little bit of resistance over here in the mid level zone if it does pull back and it comes into three dollar level that could be another opportunity to scale into position watch for the consolidation over there as well when you look at that we'll bring up some of your altcoin requests in a moment by the way, for those of you alive right now, we truly apologize for being late for this show. Um, we have a new team which is currently rotating uh, into, into uploading the shows, and the show is unlisted. So it happens once in a while. Uh, just forgive us. It won't happen again. 9.30 a.m. SAST is the showtime slot. Okay, I am still in my Filecoin long over here if you look at Prime XPT. So holding that position over there, uh, we would need to cut these positions. I'll update you if, of course, Bitcoin starts to reject and starts to roll over, we'll probably have to cut these positions. But as it currently stands, we're still 108% up on this position. And I'm, I'm going to be looking to take a couple more of these. Uh, probably the next one is Phantom. So we'll hopefully open up a Phantom long over here. I already opened up one uh, with the Whale Room uh, member last night but i'll probably scale into a new one by the way if you do want to check out prime xpt you can trade crypto stocks commodities forex pairs so gold s p 500 uh, i think even apples on there uh, check out the link in the description below for you guys that are live right now if you use the link below you'll get up to seven thousand dollar sign up bonus uh, check that out below okay eth btc as well as ethereum here are the key levels ETH USD is on the right hand side. Okay, in a bull market, you expect that price should hold the 50% retracement level, which is currently where ETH is or ETH USD is bouncing from right now. 3,145, that's the level. It's currently holding that as support. Let's see if it can find some uh, added buying pressure and reclaim back above 3,400. If you see something like that, it will be incredibly bullish and we could start to see the stars align, right? BlackRock launching a fund on Ethereum over there with a $100 million fund. Uh, we also have the ETF, which is going to be coming up. You have ETH BTC over here, which has got dangerously low, right? I think the ETH maxis are absolutely pulling their hair out right now, freaking out about the situation, but a long-term reaccumulation. I don't want to go too much into detail on that because we've spoken about it a lot. The question many of you may have is, is it altcoin season? As simple as that. Is it altcoin season? Well, according to this indicator over here, full-blown altcoin season occurs when 75% of the top 50 cryptocurrency coins uh, perform better than Bitcoin. It has to be over 90 days. So if they outperform Bitcoin over 90 days, the top 50 coins, 75% of those 50, then it's altcoin season, right? Uh, it's impossible to have altcoin season without ETH BTC rallying towards the top side over here and for this reaccumulation phase to end. So that's why I look at this for so long, right? Because I don't want you guys to be buying when already that many of the coins have run, when you literally have 75% of the top 100 coins that have uh, beaten Bitcoin for 90 full days. That's too long. Uh, it's, it's At that point in time, you guys are going to get wrecked. So the very simple answer is if you're using this as your proxy and this is a reaccumulation phase, should you be accumulating altcoins? Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm one of the only YouTubers that will probably just say it as it is exactly like that. Yes, you should be. You should be accumulating altcoins, right? But given that Bitcoin holds those key levels, if Bitcoin starts to set in a daily downtrend, we're out. We have to cut our positions. It's uh, We're going in for a much deeper correction. We're out. We have to exit. Uh, we'll come back after the halving. There is often a pre-halving dump. This cycle has been different in the sense that Bitcoin created an all-time high for the very first time ever before the halving even took place. So a lot going on. But as I mentioned, when looking at Bitcoin, I told you that even if we were to start to create a daily downtrend, I still think the probability is super high that you're going to come for that untapped liquidity, uh, which has been set in that $70,000 dollar region right so pay close attention to that so are you buying the dip let's quickly review the results over here um are you buying the dip 66 percent say yes 34 percent say no i guess you could probably fragment that question a little bit deeper for the 34 percent that say no you'll probably find that 80 percent of them can't buy the dip because they're already 100 percent in right how can you buy the dip if you're already 100 percent in you can borrow money like michael saylor okay so for those of you that have cash i'm not i'm not advocating that you just ape 
your full position, full size into the market in all altcoins right now, the second. But should you have a plan to enter into the market? Definitely, you should have a plan to enter into the market. Okay, some of the narrative shifts that we need to focus on are blue coins, right? Phantom's a blue coin. Uh, you also have, of course, Base, which is also a blue coin. That's another one to look at. Ansem says over here, Coinbase has... 100 million registered users across the world. They are building a native smart wallet that allows normies, so normal people, to trade on-chain seamlessly without storing any seed phrases uh, or any sort of uh, uh, hard difficult, uh, you know, back-end tech things that you have to do. Those normies won't have to do that. They'll have a seamless, you know, user interface to interact with. They also have their own layer two, which is base, of course. Uh, what about this trade setup is hard to understand, he says. So basically, bullish on base. Now you can get exposure to their tokens. They have different tokens. If you look over here, uh, base ecosystem holdings uh, as per Wolf of Crypto, he's looking at GB is the ticker, a real world asset. Normie, the normies are going to come, right? So Normie is the meme coin. Uh, be careful with the meme coins, guys. As always, you know, they, they are fad. They will die. It's a casino out there. Um, very, very hyped. And ultimately, you want to treat it as such. The other one is coin. Okay. I think there was one as well that they might be missing over here. Bold. I remember Bold as well. Bold was one of them. Uh, that is uh, like uh, Brian Armstrong, who, of course, is Bold and the founder of Coinbase. Bold, I think that one could run. INF, uh, Real Yield. And then you have Brett. Brett has been their top meme coin. Uh, so he says over here, these are the only tokens that are currently hold in base. And the risk to reward looks, gay, looks great. So some of the, uh, some of the cycle, um, uh, call it narrative, is starting to shift towards base. Their total value locked has started to increase significantly. And also... Also, especially when you look at the chart over here of Coinbase, as I mentioned, um, it looks like eventually we're going to have another move up 50% over the coming days or weeks, pushing price up to that $354 level. So with that being said, talking about uh, exposure to the back end of having a MetaMask or Phantom wallet, okay, there is an airdrop that BitGet are doing. If you connect your wallet uh, to, to their platform over here, uh, you can see over here, NTO, EVM, Tron, Solana address to check if you have BWP, BWB points. You won't have BWB points unless you connect your wallet. If you connect your wallet, they're doing an airdrop of these BitGet tokens, right? So go have a look. Sign up using the link in the description below. We'll get into your altcoin requests now. So start dropping those. Let's take a couple of the, those altcoin requests. All the links are in the description below. I want to remind you by participating in signing up to uh, these exchange links below, you'll have access to the banter bags giveaway as well as the uh, guest uh, the price of the Bitcoin where you can one, win one full Bitcoin, right? So you go over here, you guess what you think Bitcoin will be on the 15th of May. Closest guess wins a full Bitcoin. Okay, let's quickly go. Let's quickly go into some of these alts. Uh, is this my chart? Yes, this is the chart. Okay, let's take a couple of these. Um, I saw Hemuel, you guys are asking about things like that. Very quickly, uh, some of these, okay, Hemuel's up 26.5%. So there it is. It's sitting right at the range lows. Lemiao. Um, also, meme coins, right? Because you guys are worried meme coins are getting wrecked. Uh, it is in a downtrend, of course, but it's still holding the range level, so that's okay. Um, yeah, as for the rest of them, uh, exercise your own risk, right? Exercise your own risk. Okay, also IRS range lows, holding those range lows. I don't own the Elizabeth coin at all, but I'll look at it because a lot of people do. Um, this is a pretty significant level for this to hold. It needs to break back above the zone and defend that level. That's a clear SR flip zone. You want to see that level hold. Bink, uh, how's this one doing? Also, range lows. Bink holding range lows. Let's see if we can get another move up to the range highs. And I think that's it, right? I think that's it. Is there anything else? Okay, that's it. That's it. Let's quickly go into the bigger altcoins over here. What do we have? What do we have? Okay, uh, Pulse Chain. Somebody asked for Pulse Chain over there. I'm going to go to Pulse Chain. Actually, I have it on this list because uh, I haven't looked at that for a while. Let's quickly see how's Pulse Chain doing. All right, we've got to go into a much higher time frame for these ones. Let's go into a weekly. Just get get a bit more perspective. Okay, not looking good, bruv. It's come down quite a lot, but. Uh, I don't have enough price history here, to be honest with you, on this particular chart. But that's a clear level that must be defended. You don't want to see any candles below this week low. Otherwise, Pulse Chain is in trouble. Uh, Rollbit. I also want to look at Rollbit because this is one that I wanted to add 
a bit more into my position over there. Oof. Okay, that was a bad wick as well to the downside. Uh, this range low must hold, right? This range low must hold. But now you've got a big inefficiency, which might get filled and roll, but at 0.057. Okay, Pulse X right there. So let's just quickly look at it as well. Uh, that is, of course, the Pulse Chain Dex. Also losing a pretty key level over here. Um, if it's going to maintain this uptrend, this weekly candle needs to close back towards the upside, and you need to see a wick found over there. Uh, but ultimately, on this one, I have a bit more price history. The only thing going for it really is maybe, maybe have a cup and handle formation over there, uh, which we know the measured moves break towards the upside a lot higher. Okay, um, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's see Zeta. How's Zeta doing? Okay, reclaiming the range low over there, Solana. Okay, also, a lot of these, uh, I know that the bulls, they better be hoping that um, prices get bought up very, very quickly over here, and this starts to just look like another high low. Um, pretty much the bullish validation is going to be a break above these levels. Uh, you obviously don't want to wait for that high, but just understand if price starts to trade back towards the top side over here, most likely you're going to see things break out very, very quickly over there. Casper, let's have a look at Casper. Okay, Casper also still bleeding down, right? Still a downtrend over here on the on the um, uh, four hour time frame. Coming into the mid range level though, this is the mid range this zone over here. So we do want to see price bounce out of this level. Let's quickly put on a fib tool over here just to get a little bit of a of an indication of where things are at. Okay, we almost hit the seven eight six. You might get one more sweep down that comes into that seven eight six. That's going to be coming in at eleven three zero point. Uh, 113 would be the zone to watch. Injective, how's Injective doing? Okay, Injective is in the daily candle newsletter today. There is a link below. It's free if you want to sign up to that. Um, watch for a potential sweep a bit lower, right? There is a chance that this was the buying opportunity, but if the low time frame, you always want to look on, for example, the, the hourly time frame when you're trying to get your trigger, your entry into the market. Look at the hourly and just wait for the trend to shift. So I'm going to quickly hide this just so that we can see nicely uh, where's the hide button. There it is. Okay. So you saw the risk to reward tool. We're looking for an entry somewhere around here. What would confirm that entry? Well, if you see a break of structure, higher high, now the next high low that starts to hold, you know, there's your entry. Stop goes below, enter over here, and then you can let that trade play out, which would look like this. There we go. That would look like this. So that is your injective long up to $74, $75. Um, okay, let's go on to Atom. How's Atom doing? Okay, just quickly go into the daily as well. All right, let it load, let it load. Okay, Atom has deviated this level, as mentioned. Uh, you don't typically want to see that. Now the bullish validation for the bulls to gain back control, you need to see Atom get back above $12 and hold that level. If Atom cannot get back above $12, Unfortunately, uh, it, the possibility of revisiting all the way down to these lows at $6 becomes a reality, right? So manage your risk accordingly. Manage your risk accordingly. Uh, be careful out there. Do, do not get wrecked, right? You can't get wrecked. It's impossible to get wrecked if you're calculating how much risk you're putting on the table and you're not over-risking into the market. Okay, um, guys, I think that's about it. Let's cut it off over there. I don't want to go too far. Um, I will see you guys all on the next one. Have a stay a day. I'll see Wales School members tonight for the final workshop. So be there and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.